we still got a little bit of time left. Um, I wanted to talk to you about the uh, Star Wars trailer. Now, you weren't going to watch it at all, I guess, originally, right? Yeah, I didn't want to see anything about it until I actually went to the theater. But obviously, that's impossible with the internet nowadays. But I was going to say, did, once the well. big trailers come out, <laughs> you, uh, you're you going to be in trouble with the big trailer. Everyone's going to be talking about them. But. Um, yeah. So I felt a little bad having you break your <laughs> <laughs> your your vow not to see anything, and I don't blame you for that. But I'm so eager to know about the movie that I've been looking up like potential spoilers and stuff like that, which is rare for me. I I, I tend to be like you, where I don't want to know that much until I actually see it. So yeah. So you watched the trailer for the first time tonight, right? Yeah, probably like an hour ago, hour and a half ago. Now, what do uh, you think? <laughs> well, you I know, mean, like, okay. <laughs> like, yeah, I mean, I think it's going to be awesome. Mm-hmm. I think, you know, what J.J. J. Abrams did with Star Trek was really, really good. And right. I think he's going to do the same thing with Star Wars. And, I mean, as long as it's better than the the prequels, then I'm happy. But, I mean, from what I got from the trailer, I kind of, I like w- the style that he's going with. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't mind the Black Stro- uh, Stormtrooper. I don't know why people have an issue with that. Um, we should talk about I mean, that. Huh? What's that? We should talk about that because. Okay. I, well, okay. Um, we'll go ahead. Finish your thoughts. Huh? Oh, I mean, I mean, we can talk about that now if you want. But um, basically, okay. So you have all the clone troopers, which are a clone of Jango Fett, mm-hmm. who is, um, you know, everybody knows what Jango Fett looks like. So all right. the clone troopers are going to look like that. But by the time that you get to A New Hope, and even like. Um, a couple years before that, they started initial uh, initiating human the human race into the clones because they were running out. They had lost like the clone factories. Right. By the time. That's exactly so, what I was going to say too. I mean, I think one of the original plots for New Hope had Luke um, potentially going to join the. He was going to go join the um, the Empire. You know, go and be yeah. a stormtrooper. And he gets sidetracked with Obi Wan Kenobi, you know, and set on the on the right path. But it was something he was considering. Obviously, they were recruiting uh, um, uh, uh, other char- other people to be stormtroopers. It was no longer just the Jango Fett character. As a matter of fact, yeah, we don't know what's happened to the the, the clone factory. If anything, I would have thought the uh, uh, the the clone factories would have gotten wiped out. Um, well, maybe after after Return of the Jedi, when you're getting to the, the you know the, the 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 Force Awakens movie, yeah. if the clone factories were still in existence if by the time you know we get to Return of the Jedi and the Rebels win and stuff, I would think they would have destroyed any clone factories left, just being worried about you know the fact that they had this implant at one point that you know made them serve the Emperor. So right. So yeah, I don't know why people are so surprised by this. I mean, it's what is it, 20 years between episode 3 and 4? And then another 20 years between episode uh, 6 and 7. So, And that doesn't count the time in between, so we're talking like 50 years span where... Right. Yeah, you know, yeah. so... And I, I mean, I, like, even in A New Hope, like, if you want to be really technical with it, there's stormtroopers with different heights. Yeah, exactly. I mean, obviously that means they're not all the same person, so... It, I was kind of shocked that that was the one thing people were complaining about. It was but. really strange that, that people, the amount of complaints out there, that more people weren't saying this in the first place. And because, uh, like, I even heard them talking about it, like, on Howard Stern. And and um, I was like, you know, this, I knew this going into how come people don't seem to, how come people on the show aren't speaking up, like other people in the studio who are Star Wars fans and saying, well, these aren't all clones anymore. Even, like, Luke, when he was wearing the Stormtrooper outfit, he was shorter than the average stormtrooper, but he was still able to walk through the Death Star because it wasn't uncommon to have, you know, like you said, exactly. different height star- stormtroopers. So, yeah, I thought that was dumb. Uh, people complaining about that. People complaining about the lightsaber was dumb. Maybe, I like the lightsaber yeah, a lot, I thought it looked actually. cool, and maybe it wasn't for defense that he had the the, the two side blades. Maybe it was for style. I mean, he's a yeah. Sith Lord. He could be, you know, they wear different outfits and. And 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 do different. I don't know what you want to call it, like tribal type stuff. Yeah, maybe it's a feature I mean, to the lightsaber just because he thinks it looks cool. But yeah, and I mean, even if you look at it from a defensive standpoint, which makes complete sense because look at Anakin Skywalker and Luke Skywalker. They both lost their hands in a lightsaber fight, right. and if they would have had something like that, they wouldn't have lost their hands. So 
I mean, it just makes sense. Like, I don't know why they haven't had that before. And it fits with, like, the whole medieval sword fighting theme. Like, the sword styles back in those days had those, right. like, hilts, basically, that protects your hands. So... Well, people I, are I saying they, people could, are they could cut in close. The one guy was saying you cut in close and you'd cut through that hilt, which Stephen Colbert responded by saying it's basically one beam, you know, yeah. which might be true. But, but at the same time, not too many people will cut straight down on a sword... You know, when they're in a sword fight, he's going to counter it. So, yeah. you know, he's not going to rely on that just not to cut his hands off. If if that isn't one blade and it can be cut through, but if he's able, you know, if someone's cutting down and he adjusts it, like you said, yeah, maybe he could protect his wrist with it from being yeah. cut off by by um by having those extra extensions and stuff. But I agree with you. I'm excited about J.J. J. Abrams uh, directing it. I did enjoy the new Star Trek movies. The second one, not as much as the first, but I still liked it. Um, and um, uh, the Star Trek movies, though, he made very flashy and showy with a lot of, like, things happening every shot. And one of the things I liked about the Star Wars trailer is... It's not. Yeah, like, it's not. He, he uh, it, it, and, and it was made more obvious even to me when I saw, like, people doing the George Lucas cuts of the Force Awakens trailers. Right. And they would add in, like, tons of TIE fighters and, and Jawas and, and, and Dubaks and stuff walking in front of the camera and stuff. And yeah, he just kept like that first shot. The stormtrooper comes off, and he runs, and it's just you know desert, or even the little droid going across. And you got some cool machinery there that you're trying to you know look at for a hint of what's going on, you know what's going to be happening in the movie. But but at the same time, it's not packed with stuff. It's sort of sparsely you know scattered throughout, and and it does harken back to you know the original trilogy, yeah. and, and especially episode uh, four, um, uh, in its original version at least, you know. So. So yeah, I like that. I like that vibe that I was getting from the trailer. I feel like he's doing um, uh, a lot of cool, uh, cool stuff with it. But he's also adding in his J.J. Abrams touch, like with that you know cool shot with the Millennium Falcon, you know going upside down and going back up and stuff. And it's just a uh, uh, a shot like you wouldn't necessarily see Lucas do. So yeah, I do. I I think my favorite part though is the stormtroopers in the their ship. Oh, that was cool. Um, kind yeah. of like all dark with just the stormtroopers highlighted and the guns you can see have like the, the LED, you know, almost mm -hmm. like the ammo count kind of thing. And it makes it look really like much more militaristic and efficient, whereas yeah. the stormtroopers I didn't feel were as efficient killers in the other ones. But that's true. They were horrible shots, of course. That's yeah. always the joke. So <laughs> they killed um, like an Ewok, and that was about it. So. <laughs> <laughs> I know they lost to the Ewoks. That seemed a little far fetched. <laughs> but um, but yeah, I was actually surprised to to see them, except because I would think of anything. The stuff I've read about it almost sounds like once the rebellion won, they sort of moved in and took over all the equipment you know that the empire was using which originally i guess in a sense was theirs you know back in the uh, original trilogy or in the um uh, uh the, the the prequels right and uh um so i would have thought of anything they might have cycled out the stormtroopers or changed them drastically so it makes me wonder if they're you know, working for the good guys or the bad guys, because they very well might be working for the good guys. You know, at that point. Yeah, it's very true. You know. Yeah. Um. Uh, it's, let me see other things that I've read about it. Do you care about spoilers that I've read? <laughs> I think the <laughs> no, biggest I mean, one it's... I wanted to talk about is I've heard that it opens up with um, uh, in the spoiler alert. So if anyone is um uh, is watching and doesn't want a potential plot line for the movie being spoiled, you know. Uh, jump ahead at this point or, or, or turn off the video but uh, I heard that it opens up with Luke's hand spinning through space and stuff and a lot of people I've seen discussing this you know and, and when I first heard it, I thought it sounded kind of dumb Luke's hand with a lightsaber by the way spinning through space yeah. and, um, and I was like Luke loses his hand again that sounds stupid but I think what the hand is is probably the one he lost you know in at the Cloud City with Emperor Strikes right. Back so uh, I haven't seen anyone uh, theorize that that's what it might be but um, you know it, it, what I've heard is it leads to basically they find the hand and the lightsaber um, and uh, the planet which I think is Tatooine and they bring it to Han Solo who sets out to find Luke because of it um, but if it's not like a newly lost hand I was wondering what what might make them go find Luke, you know, if they determine it's the old Cloud City one. The only thing I think it could be is if they found it, it might make them speculate as how 
did it get from the Cloud City to Tatooine or whatever planet that they happen to find it on. So, right. But again, that's just uh, one of the theories of how it opens and, and um, you know, what gets the plot moving. I've heard different, you know, potential plot lines where Luke is good and Luke is evil, so... I don't feel like he's going to completely abandon the books. Even though they've made it to be, say, like, you know, these aren't canon, I mm-hmm. still feel like that's such a good storyline that he can't just completely abandon the fact that, you know, the twins and their fall. And There's a lot of speculation, yeah, that it's the twins and it does follow one of them falling and one of them potentially being good in the yeah. final battle. And that could be interesting, but it kind of echoes the prequels a little bit. Um, but that is kind of a driving storyline of Star Wars. I mean, you saw that, you know, in all the episodes, the, the, you know, the, all, or both trilogies, you know, where this temptation yeah. to go to the dark side, Luke fought it for three, you know, movies, well, two, two of the three, basically, and then uh, Anakin fought it, you know, as well. So, you know, it could be the storyline, the, the basic subplot or main plot that they follow with everything else kind of going on around it. I mean, that would make, that would make some sense, so... Uh, do I? Th- I don't think Luke um, will turn out to be evil. In my opinion, I think yeah. I think that'd be too much of a betrayal of the Star Wars fans. And and JJ Abrams yeah. seems to be a big Star Wars fan, so I can't see him going that route. Because Luke went through so much, you know, to to finally defeat Darth Vader and the Emperor, and then he turns, you know, to the dark side. Yeah, I just don't see that happening. Yeah. Uh, as long I, as they have Boba Fett in it, it could be the any anything. I don't really care. <laughs> it's I just want him back. Well, but I mean, he easily could have really survived. So off, then it's gonna suck. It's it's hard to say. I know that's one of the movies that they're speculating on is one of the um, you know the the side movies that they're gonna do on the you know the character movies. Yeah. And I don't know if it'd be like you know early days Boba Fett or it'd be Boba Fett you know after he escaped from the Sarlacc pit. So. But I know in the extended universe he did. And, yeah, I mean, some of the extended universe stuff, it'd be hard for them not to use. And I know, you know, some of it came from Lucas. Um, you know, might have been little ideas he threw out there where they expand him into big ideas. But he is an advisor, and they're using part of his ideas uh, uh, for the new movie and the new trilogy. So, you know, I'm sure some of it spills over, you know, uh, uh, and how much, you know, uh, Luke, you know, I always thought it'd be cool Luke, we started the Jedi Order and was training Jedis, new Jedis and stuff. So when we caught up to them, you know, there's a whole new Jedi Order. But yeah. that almost would be too easy and convenient. I've kind of liked the fact that if he has gone off into seclusion, you know, which is one of the things that have been theorized, uh, um, that that would be kind of a cool, unexpected, you know, uh, uh, twist to it. And be interesting to see where that goes. So, mm-hmm. do you think they'll kill off Han Solo in the new movie? Mm, no. 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 I don't think so. I, I mean, mean I know maybe f- the very last one, he'll die of old age. <laughs> but, like, I don't think they'll ever kill him. I mean, I think people would be too upset, honestly. Oh, yeah, definitely. I, I, you know how he wanted Han Solo to die. Harrison Ford did in, in Return yeah. of the Jedi, right? You heard that story? And yeah. Stuff. So I wondered if part of him coming back was his, uh, if his insistence was like, okay, I'll come back, but you have to kill my character off. Because, uh, you know, he doesn't like Han Solo... Uh, he said that publicly a number of times. He doesn't like the character very much. Hopefully, he's coming back to something that he likes, and hopefully, they won't kill him off. Because yeah, I mean, you know, he's one of the most beloved characters of all time in the series, and definitely, you know, in the top five, if not higher. And and yeah, I yeah. think a lot of people would be ticked. And one of the endings I had heard was, you know, had him dying. So um, I wouldn't be surprised though if they killed off Luke. Maybe not in the very first one back, but in the second or third one. Yeah. I mean, I would be more likely to believe they'll kill off Luke than they would to kill off Han Solo because Luke could be, like, that driving force but behind, you know, the vanquishing of the Sith or whatever is going right. to come, you know. Uh, you kill my teacher type of thing. or Yeah, he's got to move like into that. that mentor role, which he's, I mean, it sounds like he m- pretty much is moving into the mentor role from the, or I wouldn't be surprised, I shouldn't say it sounds like it, but I wouldn't be surprised if in this very first movie he goes from... He goes right into that role by the end yeah. of the movie, but yeah, it almost seems like he has to die, become like the Obi Wan Kenobi, the Yoda, whatever, um, uh, to to sort of instruct, you know, from beyond. But 
he seems game to do more movies. Maybe they'll keep his character alive and stuff. Where Harrison Ford's, if they don't kill off Han Solo, at least maybe they'll have him, you know, off doing something else but still alive, you know. Yeah. Or even captured again and sent off somewhere. True, knows? could be that. So, I haven't heard anything about Princess Leia. I know a lot of people have been posting about that. Cause they, too, what they're doing with her seems to be completely in the dark. I wonder if she's even in the movie very much. So. Yeah. She could be like a minor character. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I like Princess Leia, uh, Leia the character, but um, if she wasn't in the movie at all, I, you know, I wouldn't be horribly disappointed. But I mean, I'd love to see her in it. So, uh, but you know, it doesn't seem to be um, any hint of her having a big uh, uh, plot or a big role in the movie from th- the advanced stuff that I've been reading and stuff. But again, I've read you know little or i've had ideas or read little sneak peeks about other things like that and um when i've seen the movies not even close you know so i remember yeah. reading the novel for empire strikes back and I, i'm fairly young i think still at the time but i had a completely different vision of uh well not completely but vastly different vision of what the movie was like when i actually saw it i think it was uh, i think it was empire so uh, you know, I don't know if the novels were just different or if my mind just, you know, uh, imagined it in a different way or something. But, but yeah, you know, I could be reading all these subpl- or all these uh, uh, spoilers and stuff and then get to see the movie and be like, okay, it's completely different, which would be an awesome surprise, you know. Uh, yeah, I mean, I feel that way about Terminator. Like, I'm hoping... Yeah, I want to talk about Terminator, I, too. Yeah, I mean, what I, what I think is happening, I hope, isn't what's happening, but... I, well, what I, I understand, I, th- I think Entertainment Weekly had the basic plot in there. It sounds like uh, Arnold's, you know, they, they sent a Terminator back to safeguard Sarah Connor when she was a child because they had sent one back to kill her. Right. And that Terminator has raised her and had yeah. to do like a fake aging process or something. So that's why he looks like an old Terminator with Arnold Schwarzenegger there in the, in the trailers and stuff, you know, destroying the new... Or he, it looks like he goes to, to to kill the new Terminator, which from the first movie when that one shows up, which is him, yeah. the younger version. So is that what you've heard as well, or have you heard something different? Um, well, I haven't really read into that um, much either, and I was okay with watching the trailer for this one because I don't know. I, I feel like they've destroyed so much of the Terminator. Yeah, it the, really the, has. The other ones little... that it's kind of like, eh, this will be just another one of those things. Let me just go ahead and watch the trailer and see if it's any interesting. Um, I, f- I think it would be cool if basically, you know, if it's not a linear timeline, it's branched out to be multiple timelines. And there's even like one clip where they have almost like a, uh, a time machine that's not part of Skynet in the future. It looks like it's a modern time machine um, like midway through that trailer but yep. I think that maybe it would be kind of cool like if they took um, the salvation timeline um, and they sent back the Terminator that becomes the old Terminator that's protecting Sarah Connor and through that when the the Kyle Reese and the John Connor that you see in the trailer are actually like the original Kyle Reese and John Connor. And so like at that point, Kyle Reese is not John Connor's father. He's just a soldier. And so he sends him back in time in what he thinks is the timeline that would be Terminator 1, but it's a retroactive timeline because of Terminator Salvation changing Terminator 1's timeline. I don't know if that makes any sense, but... um, Uh, A little bit, I mean... What you're describing, it sounds like they're doing, but they're doing it at, like, an earlier point, in a sense, you know. They said they because jumped him back to way earlier, and then they have different characters. But they, right. but it looks like they're playing out the same scenes, you know, with, like, Kyle Reese getting the clothes, you know, in the Army-Navy store there. Right. Except now the car smashes through, and then she comes to save him, you know. And a T-1000 is there, or at least what seems yeah. to be a T-1000 is there. So that means that Skynet has advanced to the point where they already knew this was happening or have seen this before and they needed to send the T-1000 back earlier. Mm-hmm. So, like, I don't... Like, I think it would be cool if the T-1000 wasn't there and came in at a later time, um, but, like, already had... Well, no, I guess it makes sense that a T-1000 would be there if they sent the T-800 back and it failed the mission because the old T-800's there. Right. And so Skynet already knows that, and so they send a T-1000 back to try and kill Kyle 
but then Sarah Connor's already known all this history as well. So it's it's a mind game. I don't know what they're trying it, it, to... It, it can get messy because of the timelines, the fact that they can keep changing. Because, yeah, they had one chance to send a Terminator back, and then suddenly in the second movie they, they managed to slip a second one back at a different time, uh, a point in time. And then, you know, now they're it's... able to jump them back. But I guess as each timeline goes forward... You know, and then the machines, yeah, the the machines rise up and they're aware of, okay, well, we jump back two Terminators and this happens, so let's jump back a third Terminator this time instead. Uh, And it becomes all very muddled, but I mean, it's very hard to keep, I think, a time travel storyline to have it make sense over so many different movies. But by the third movie, I thought they were kind of blowing it in the third movie, but it wasn't too bad. Yeah. But but by the uh, Terminator Salvation, they'd just gone so far off track that it just um, became a big mess. Uh, uh, so, like I feel that Terminator Two, Three, and Four are one continuous timeline, probably. They seem and to be pretty much yeah. That uh, Salvation is running uh, since basically I think that at the end of Salvation they would have sent another Terminator to kind of be like a Hail Mary, let's start at the beginning and go all the way through. Mm -hmm. And that in turn affected where they're sending Kyle Reese, you know, in the, in this new one. Um, because she mentions like the timeline that, you know, doesn't exist anymore. And, you know, it just makes sense that someone messed up somewhere down the line, if it was her or like the Terminator that was sent back. Um, because the whole aging thing, I don't think that's the living tissues aged. It's, um, right. I don't think it's a disguise or anything. It's just that he's he's naturally aged. Old. Yeah. yeah. The uh, what was I going to say about that? The um, uh, what did you think of the original supposed ending of Terminator Terminator Salvation? I mean, actually, I thought it made sense. I don't know if you know the original ending was supposed to be uh, they uh, basically. I think they correct me if I'm wrong. I think they took his skin off or something and. Put it over the Terminator. Put it on the Terminator yeah. to make it seem like he was still alive. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, but that made sense how he'd become this, you know, great warrior that could defeat the Terminators, you know, instead of right. getting the Terminator heart, you know. Um, yeah. Uh, what did you did you like that ending better I, than the ending they did? I I don't know about that because, I mean, I, it would make sense, yes, but I feel like it would be found out eventually and people would be like, what the hell, you know, is going on? Yeah. Um, and probably not trust it all the way. So I feel like it would hamper his ability later on to, like, lead people. But I don't think the John it Connor... It could have been an interesting plot this... line, though. If it would, oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, it's like the original ending for Terminator 2 was supposed to be uh, he became a senator and banned the technology to even have Skynet, and that was the happy ending, and mm-hmm. that was the end of it. But, um, yeah, I mean, it would be interesting to see where they would go with that. For sure. The um, uh, what was I going to say about that though? Um, the uh, uh oh, shoot, I totally blanked. What you're talking about? Um, uh, oh, I, I think uh, that's what I was going to say. The I th- I think the problem that people had with that though, I think it was the audiences who didn't like that ending. I think audiences who were watching Terminator movies and loved them didn't want to think that a Terminator was ultimately the salvation of mankind, even though a Terminator yeah. can assist, but it had to be a human who won the war. You know, and I think that's why the test audiences probably rejected that, you know. Um, yeah, I can see that for so. sure. But uh, I've, I only watched the trailer once uh, for the new one, and, and you know, it, it piqued my interest because I wasn't that excited about it. Uh, I like Arnold, uh, and I've liked the new movies that he's made. Um, Last Stand and Sabotage, you know, I enjoyed both of them, but you know, the, the Terminator movies had lost it, you know, quite a bit for me. I, I would still watch him, but I don't know if I'd rush to the theater to see him. But but this one, you know, it's piqued my interest. But again, you know, even from the trailer, you know, I was I was a bit confused. And that's a potentially bad sign, you know, when the trailer is confusing, yeah. you know. So. I mean, I think that I just don't like the fact that they're trying to rehash the same stuff. Well, like, it's a reboot, it seems like. They want to reboot right. the series, try exactly. to repair the damage that was done to it. And... That way they can do a second or third movie following the new timeline with the new younger characters, you know, and that's part of the problem. The characters got too old to play the roles, you know. Yeah, I mean, I kind of wish that if you were going to reboot it, reboot from the third one on, not Mm -hmm. try to reboot from the original on, 
um, because I felt I feel like the first two will hold up forever, you know. And yeah, the, third the first one two are is, great. You know, the third one is where it started to decline Definitely. pretty drastically. So it's like, you know, reboot those, please. <laughs> like, that's how I always felt about the Alien series. I think the only series I've seen that's gotten more muddled than the Terminator series is the Alien series. Because that yeah. was so great through the first two, and then the third one, you know, beautiful, be, be, uh, beautifully shot, um, and it would have been a good storyline, say, for another Alien movie, but, you know, not an Alien series, but another, say, outer space movie or something, or monster yeah. movie. But it didn't work there. It was just too far different from the other movies, and it changed the 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 the, 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 the not the timeline, but the it basically changed everything going forward. And I thought, man, when they do Alien Four, I hope they just ignore Alien Three, and they didn't. You know, they, what I was just starting to say before the mic cut out is uh, uh the, the just the Alien series has gotten so muddled um, with uh, uh, they just betrayed us with the third movie by killing off Ripley. They betrayed us from the beginning by killing off the little girl and yeah. um, uh, Hicks there, and. Um, you know, after they had gone through so much in the second movie that it was just a bad start, and then killing her off at the end, it was just horrible. Like I, I always hoped they'd reboot that and just ignore everything in, uh, after the second movie and and just start from there. It was so. a dream. Yeah, exactly. That's what it was going to be and stuff. You know, and why yeah. not? It seemed like you know they were afraid to follow that storyline for some reason. Then Alien Resurrection was just a mess. You know, the Alien vs. Predator movies don't bother me because they're just off in their own universe. But, uh, uh, but yeah, they just right. ruined a, you know, a great series there. So, well, we better wrap up. We're getting up, you know, past an, well past an hour here and stuff. And, and, uh, so, uh, I think we covered everything we wanted to talk today, but if not, I'll get you back on a future episode. So, uh, I want to thank you for joining me tonight. Uh, Any final trivia for our listeners? <laughs> thank you for having me. Oh, no final trivia? Um, what was your favorite quote? Let me punch it up. Well, here. okay. So, Terminator, speaking of. It's, they say that the time is the fire. My favorite quote of what? <laughs> From Star Trek. They say time is the fire in which we burn. <laughs> <laughs> I had to look it up before we got out. We all burn or something. So. All right, give us a final trivia, and then we'll we'll, we'll tune out here. <laughs> okay, so uh, the, in Terminator 3, uh, he says that he's a T-101, which is completely false. It's a, a T-850 at that point with a Cyberdyne Systems Model 101. <laughs> 101 for Cyberdyne System Model is his skin model, so all T-800s that have Cyberdyne Systems Model 101 look like Arnold Schwarzenegger. Okay. So that's my my trivia too bad they didn't have you as a script consultant at that point so i know fuck i mean what the hell if, if i ever do a terminator movie i will talk to you michael all right thank so, you but you can't much. be in it so okay You're too That's skinny fine. so i'm <laughs> 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 just kidding all right well thanks for joining me michael have a good night yep peace thanks. out people you too. Peace. if you enjoyed this show please leave us a like below your likes are deeply appreciated also, check out past and future episodes of Indie Filmmaker, and don't forget to follow the Subros and Network here on YouTube and at www.facebook.com slash Network. Peace out.